1998 Coachman Royal 297 RK travel trailer here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Before we get too far along in this video, I definitely want to point out that this trailer has seen uh, a, a pretty significant area of uh, water damage and seam failure in the front, as well as an additional smaller spot in the back. Well, uh, I want to tell you folks that, so that if that's an instant disqualifier for you, we'll save each other a lot of time. I'll let you go on and you know take some time to view another one of our videos. And remember, we went out of our way to tell you that proactively. We didn't, you know, hide it from you and ask you to drive from, you know, two or three hours away to show up and find out, oh, by the way, this had water damage. You know, we, uh, we have it priced accordingly to reflect its uh, current condition. The uh, areas where water had been in the coach look like they've had uh, a significant amount of attention put to them. The previous owner of this coach, uh, not the original owner, when they bought it, they got a good deal on it. They saved enough money where they were able to reinvest some dollars in it and make it camping worthy again. Um, the areas where it has had leaks, I think, have been repaired to the point that it is very campable now. But it's not my money that's looking to be spent here. So I want you to watch this video, make an educated decision. And again, if this isn't the one for you, not a problem. I've got over 300 other RVs in stock today. Uh, earlier this summer, we had close to 400. Uh, a couple things to point out before I hop inside. This does have a, a really neat little outdoor entertainment center. Before the uh, days of a flat screen built into the side of the camper, this was how it worked. You'd plug your TV in out here, had a little speaker system, pretty cool little setup. That was actually in Utah only a few years ago. Now you might see these little black dots. These are little snaps where these folks must have had a, uh, a patio uh, like drop screen awning enclosure on here. And if you notice, this is a big honking awning, about a 20, I don't know, two or four foot awning? Big awning on this sucker. So this did have a full screen room on it. I haven't completely looked through the trailer. I don't recall seeing that screen room anywhere. You might be surprised to find it hiding somewhere in one of these closets that I haven't yet inspected. Uh, looking uh, here in the living room, you know, this is one of the reasons I wanted to put this video together. Because if you just went by the pictures in this video, man, sharp looking camper. I mean, really, by and large, it's in pretty decent shape. There's just a couple spots on it that, unfortunately, we have to talk about. Um, you know, big super slide here with some really big bright windows letting in lots of ambient light. And it's a it's a dreary overcast day. It's a miserable day here. It was actually kind of misting outside, but I don't think it was enough to show up on camera. We do have a full hide bed here. Um, moving over, I love the uh, traditional you know poles in the middle of the slide. That was there for support before different mechanisms and systems were used. But I love the look of it. Now, something that I think is interesting is over here on the dining table, you see there are a couple power outlets. And what I think is cool about that is just the way times have changed, that is now the perfect place to put something like a cell phone charger. It works very well. Uh, big rear kitchen giving you tons and tons of cabinet and storage space. And obviously that in conjunction with the super slide means you guys don't have to trip over one another. If someone's back here cooking, you can go in and out of the camp or watch TV, no problem. I just noticed this has an extra large refrigerator. That is, I think that's an eight cubic foot fridge. That is not something that was typically found in travel trailers back in 98. That's a rare find. Um, back here, I do want to point out, you can kind of see these little braille bumps and nodules on the, mall, or on the wall. That is an indicator that at some point there was a water seam failure back here. Um, kind of going right along with that, down here, there is a spot where the original flooring has been removed and replacement flooring has been installed. That means that at one point there was a leak there, but that also means that they took care of it. You can see it is absolutely structurally sound today. It may not have been at one point, but again, somebody spent some serious money in this trailer making it, you know, bringing it back up into camping condition and putting some life back into it. That's why you'll see a couple problems with it here and there that I'm pointing out but they're problems that have been addressed, not left unaddressed. Um, moving forward here, we have a walkthrough middle bathroom. You have a pair of these sliding pocket doors with little holdback snaps so that you can either keep them open during the day or keep them from flying open going down the road. Um, pretty traditional walkthrough middle bathroom, just standard sink medicine cabinet type setup, nothing too fancy. Although the traditional walkthrough middle bath does bring with it a giant closet. And that goes from floor to ceiling, and you cannot get enough storage in any camper. But man, it is nice to have something like this. It's a nice attempt at having too much storage in a camper. 
Um, the other part of the walkthrough middle bath here is the actual bathroom area itself. I do like that they left a lot of leg room there, uh, you know, for taller guys like me. You see lots of linen space and whatnot behind the toilet here. And a, uh, this whole camper is extra tall. This is, this might be seven foot tall inside. Yeah, this is. This is a seven foot tall camper. I just kind of realized that that's one of the reasons it felt so darn big to me. An average camper is 78 inches tall. This is like a full six inches taller than that. Uh, generally, a, quote, big camper today is 81 inches, and that's a big deal. That's what a lot of your coachings are built like today, but this is a full three inches taller than that. That's what's giving us all this extra cabinet space. I mean, you can see how tall these cabinets are up here. Now, you have side windows, uh, two side windows here in the bedroom with a front window for all kinds of light and uh, ventilation. Now, uh, one of the things that I spotted right away when I came in is I noticed a little bit of discoloration on those panels. A lot of older campers with front uh, bedrooms, I kind of, I look under the windows and I look for errors or maybe it has leaked under here. And I didn't see anything like that. But I did notice these little tape seams right here and I started looking closer and I figured out that what happened was at some point, what's called the termination strip where the rubber roof meets the front nose cap, there's a strip where that rubber roof meets that. It looks like the seal on that had failed. And you can kind of see this little bit of roof paneling here where some water had gotten to it and it stopped here. They caught it before it got too far into the camper. The problem is they needed to replace some paneling, but you see that they did spend the money to replace it. Any really damaged paneling, they have replaced. And obviously it doesn't look the same, but it's inside a cabinet, it's out of the way. It's not like you have a big brown spot in the middle of your living room wall. So, I mean, again, anywhere that there was a problem, they spent the money to fix it, and by and large, it looks like they did an okay job of it. So, you know, that's kind of the, the determining factor. You know, so I think the NADA book says we should be selling this for like 8,200. We've got a mark significantly below that to reflect its condition today. We try to be fair with folks. Um, again, you know, if something like that is a disqualifying factor for you, remember that we took the time to show you that before you even picked up the phone. And if that's not a disqualifying factor, give us a call. We'll make you a heck of a deal and get you camping. 800-256-5196. Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Thank you, everybody. Happy camping.